This is Hindsight Radio. I represent it. The information station changing the nation. <laughs> All right, we got Dr. Madi, um, friend of mine's. We uh, hooked up in uh, London. In the past, when we go see Dr. Dan Pinier, and uh, we also did some other work on you know through my radio station, and that's how we actually made contact. But we became good friends over the uh, the months of getting to know each other. Um, so I'm gonna let him tell you what he's what he does, his business, the name of his business. There you go, Dr. Madi. Okay, all right, appreciate it, brother Akeem. So, uh, as Akeem said, I am Dr. Madi, uh, last name is Brown. I'm a naturopathic medical doctor. I was actually trained in the U.S. Uh, at the Southwest um, Naturopathic Medical School. And I currently am domiciled in Belgium, where I live. And my company is called the, well, the program I have is called the Akon Journey. And my company is Akon International. And the Akon Journey is a holistic uh, premium anti-burnout and stress recovery program. And we specifically focus on people who are cons who consider themselves high performers, who are really striving to be the best in their lives, but have put themselves in a position because of them wanting to be the best. They've overextended themselves and now they're on the verge of a burnout or they're trying to recover from one. Yeah. And so those are people that right. we primarily work with. Okay. And that's very important. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. And just kind of give you a little background. Uh, originally for me, my journey started out in holistic medicine, I'll say back in like 1995, when I was diagnosed with high blood pressure at age 19. And, hmm. and, and being on, uh, and being on a medication that they told me I had to be on for the rest of my life because there was no cure for this. And my father also had high blood pressure at a very early age. And so they said it was hereditary, it was genetic, and there's nothing you can do about it. But I have five other siblings, there's six of us who didn't have this issue. So I couldn't buy into the whole genetic thing. So that started my journey to explore there had to be some alternatives. And it wasn't mm -hmm. until I moved from South Carolina to Los Angeles and started studying Chinese medicine where I met my first naturopathic medical doctor. And he informed me that my issue was actually fairly simple. It was a magnesium deficiency. And I mm. had to change up my diet and get start eating more living foods, particularly more green foods, green vegetables, which mm -hmm. I was not doing, even though I called myself a vegetarian, I wasn't eating vegetables. And so mm -hmm. that uh, started the journey, man. And that led me to applying to naturopathic medical school there in Arizona at the Southwest College of Naturopathic Medicine. And I uh, earned my medical degree uh, back in 2010. And mm -hmm. we've been out here trying to serve the people ever since. Okay, cool. Now, I noticed you said something about you were a vegetarian, but you wasn't eating vegetables. <laughs> and I, I want to talk about that because that brings up a point like, I see a lot of vegetarians calling themselves vegetarians, but they're eating a lot of starchy foods. They're eating exactly. things that exactly. that are not really vegetables, and they're eating processed, hyper-processed, so-called vegetarian meals. Yes. Uh, which yes. I don't think is. I think is some of those things are not a, a more unhealthy than eating meat itself. Facts. Facts. Uh, Absolutely. So let's talk about that because there's some things that. I believe we need in our diet and that is uh collagen mm -hmm. and which a major source of collagen well mo most people don't know is through the skin of the animal or the joints those cartilages have a lot of collagen in it May namely particularly like pig feet pig ears cow feet and chicken feet right <laughs> and oh, that's why you see that's why you see a lot of people with the people of color have deep pretty good skin because that's a, a major part of their diet now for a person who's a vegetarian what can they how can they get that collagen that they need for their skin to keep it healthy looking because well, i'm looking at your skin your skin looks healthy 
Yeah. You know, like you, it seems like well, you're getting well, what you is, need. Well, well, this is the thing. Uh, for my diet, and I, I've like, I have had a number of discussions and actually even debates with people. I try not to debate with people, uh, but mm. in the past, you know, some of our students uh, that we were teaching through our holistic nutrition program that me and another doctor created were starch raw foodists and vegans. And, mm -hmm. and, and I was like, okay, that's great if that's working for your body. But I said, you have to understand that you have to take into consideration multiple factors that mm -hmm. your environment plays a key role. And so mm -hmm. for myself, I would say I am probably 98% plant-based, mm -hmm. but I have lamb once a year. I mean, once a month, lamb once a month. Uh, okay. I, I have some lamb chops once a month and we do like, there's five meals out of the entire month, five dinners that we will have that will have animal based protein, lamb and fish okay. between lamb and fish. And okay. you're able to get those oils, uh, specifically like those omega three oils that really kind of help support right. those tissues, like that collagen that you're speaking of. And mm -hmm. you're able to really begin to sustain um, the body that way. Because I live in Belgium, is a more frigid environment. Uh, mm -hmm. Being completely raw here would not be the most healthy thing for me to do. Now, if I was right. living in a tropical island in the Bahamas and I got yeah, warm you, breezes you can, every day, you can I, I eat can fruits sustain, and yeah, yeah, and yeah, yeah. All day, and I can sustain on that because right. the environment okay. affords the me environment. the opportunity exactly. And so you have to take right. all these into consideration and also look at yourself from a constitutional standpoint. And one of the big things that we really promote within the Akon journey is we teach ethno nutrition. So we look at mm. your ancestral lineage and how right. your ancestors were eating and mm -hmm. that component of who you are comes in into play as far as food recommendations that we make for you because it needs to be unique to you and there is no one size that fits all for people when it comes to their dietary needs and so right I'm, I'm, from, a, from a cultural mm -hmm. standpoint you know people who are of indigenous descent you know in the americas you know africa etc you know uh we've had a variety of different foods that made up our diets that were plant-based and animal-based. And, and so right. we have a tendency to thrive off that. Now I have some colleagues out there, uh, a good mentor and one, one doc who I have a lot of respect for, uh, Dr. Robert Morris, you know, he argues that we should just, we should just, we should be only eating fruit because it's just how our yeah, dental but our, 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 our dental, uh, I've heard that argument, made, but I don't think you're going to be, <laughs> you're not going to sustain off of fruit. It's and just so not possible. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. And so the whole thing, going back to what, what I was just saying to you, put an Eskimo on fruit and see how they do up there. They, in, uh, mm, they, their, their diet, you know, just watching some discovery programs is mainly oil based, like, uh, you exactly. know, deep, heavy Ever oil based beef. Yeah. yeah, right. Because it's cold means, out there. It's you could never survive. Exactly. Seal, right. these kinds of things, you know, that, that right. blubber is very essential to them because of the environment in which they live. You put them on a f completely fruit based diet. And what he advocates is like citric fruit, you know, like oranges and mm. lemons. Man, they'll be dead on you in a month or so's time because they can't sustain that well, they, kind of meal. Yeah that kind of food in that environment. And so you have to take those things in consideration. And so for to, to really support yourself, you have to really take a honest examination of your body temple, your constitution, your ancestry, and really think about what foods really help you thrive. And you can check in with right. your body. And this is one of the things that we are, we're always teaching that you can check in with your body and you actually can feel when you eat a food, is it inner producing or energy draining? When you eat a mm -hmm. meal, if you next thing you feel you have to go take a nap, that food that's, a, that's not a good was, food for uh, you. Yeah. That wasn't good food for you because it, it should be energy right. producing. You shouldn't right. go away from a meal feeling like, oh my gosh, man, I need to sit down, you need and to lay down, rest and rest. Right. So I gotta lay down, and and so that those are key indicators. But most of us are so we lack a, a sense of self awareness, and we're not paying attention to how we feel. We're just constantly on the go, 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 go. 
mm-hmm. distracted by this, distracted by that. We never really check in with our bodies and we're not in tune with our bodies to really get an understanding of what is serving it and what allows it to flourish and what, uh, and what is taking energy away from it. Right. Yeah, I think connected tissue, keeping that strong is a very important uh, a part of your health. It because you can, you can get like, it through, you can get it through right. plant based, and but you also can get it through animal based proteins. But that connected right. tissue is key because that for your skin, you know, basically holds the body temple together. Right, right. I was I talked to you know you are you familiar with Dr. Daniels? Yeah, of course. She was a vegan for twenty six <laughs> years, and her story was she just all of you know she you know it was good for the first twenty years, yeah. right? But then as she aged. She started to notice energy drain and she started to notice, you know, teeth. She was losing a couple of teeth. She just didn't have any energy. And then one day she ate, I think, a piece of meat, something. And then all of a sudden she had energy. So she started to look closely at her diet and what was needed. And she saw that what was really missing was collagen. She couldn't she, she said she couldn't even ride in a car because she could feel her internal organs just bouncing around because they weren't. The connective tissue was gone. Yeah, yeah, yeah you yeah, know. Yeah. And I have and, a uh, very similar story to that. Right. So, yeah. so she. <laughs> and then I asked her, "Well, what do you do now? How often do you she, she, you eat meat?" Now she eats meat every day, but she eats specific parts. She's not just mm. eating anything. Mm-hmm. She's eating the con, you know the connective the, the, the high col- the connective tissue parts mm-hmm. and the organ meats. Mm-hmm. That's what she's concentrating on. And when I look at it, she looks great, just like your skin looks great. So I think, like you're saying, I believe what you're saying, that it all depends on ancestry, number one. And what you, because that is key because what you are used to, your family taking and eating. And I know that to be true because I went to visit my aunt, 104 years old now. And I was staying with her and she cooked some bacon and I wasn't eating pork at all. You know, I wasn't even touching pork. I was eating meat, but no pork. And I was like, how am I going to, at this time she's around 103. I was like, how am I going to tell her that I, she done cook this meal that I'm not eating this bacon. What am I going to do? So I just said, you know what? I'll eat this, take me some vitality capsules, flush it out. <laughs> but one thing I noticed once I ate that bacon, my whole or um, energy changed. Like I felt mm-hmm. like really fulfilled, you know, mm-hmm. I felt good. Mm-hmm. And I was like, Hmm, there's something to this. Mm-hmm. And, and it's it, because of that fatty part of it. We, you know, some of the doctors say that's not good for us, but to a degree it is uh, an important part of our diet. It absolutely. Is, and brother. Absolutely. That's what, uh, <laughs> yeah. Because I noticed it, I felt, and then I was having these little issues. Like I was going to the doctor, trying to figure out what was going going with going on with me. They couldn't figure out it, what was going on, and what it was, I was missing key things in my diet. I yeah. I was things I needed, I didn't have, and um, then once I started, you know, eating certain things again, those problems just went away like that. Yeah. So I think you know. Some people I know that are all vegan and they look great, but they're yeah. young, very young at the, now. Uh, and um, then I see people who are vegans and they don't. Their skin looks, you know, rough, r- very rough skin. And I'm um, like, OK, you, you're not convincing me to be a vegan because I'm looking at your diet and I, and I see what they eat. They eat all these processed, highly processed so-called vegan ice cream and things like that yeah yeah there's a there's a there's a sister uh her name is uh annette i had to look her up really quick her name is annette larkins Mm -hmm. now she's been a vegan for i think like 40 some odd years okay she's Mm -hmm. in her 70s but she looks like she's in her 30s late 30s early 40s Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. her husband on the other hand diabetic gout Mm -hmm. high blood pressure and he's eating the pork he's eating these things right and she skin is flawless now this is the thing she lives in florida okay see she lives in a warm climate okay a very warm climate she's in the miami-dade area 
So she's down there in mm-hmm. almost a tropical environment, okay? So right. she can eat this way and the environment supports and sustains that and she looks amazing. And eating mm-hmm. living foods, the more living foods you put in here, the more it's like this, mm-hmm. more, the more living foods you put in you, the more life you have. So right. they interviewed her and they interviewed her husband. And they normally people think like he's the the, the, the father mm-hmm. and she's the of daughter. Her. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. But they're actually husband and wife and they're like two years apart in age. Mm hmm. And they're like, why didn't you do this? He's like, you know, I'm a country boy. I, I grew up on the farm. I'm going to eat this stuff. I'm right, going right, right. to eat this and I'm going to enjoy. Okay. But they're like, yeah, okay. Yeah, but look at your wife, you know? And and so it really depends. And I think in the case of Dr. Daniels, where she was living, uh, mm-hmm. had a part to play. Because I think she was up north, if I'm not mistaken. Um, no, well, um, yeah, she started out in New York yeah. eating that way. Yeah. Now yeah. she's in Panama. She's yeah, in so Panama now. Yeah, so she's in the tropics. So yeah, so in that. Panama, it, it, it is, it's a more sustainable environment. But uh, mm-hmm. but for myself, I was a vegan for four years, and I started medical school. Mm-hmm. And I went through my first year there mm-hmm. and all the stress. Now, Arizona is a you know fairly warm place. And the, yes, the, warm, the, dry the, place. Yeah, yeah. yeah the, 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 the uh, winters are fairly mild there. And mm-hmm. I had moved from Los Angeles to Arizona for medical school, mm-hmm. a vegan. I was thriving in LA. I got to Arizona and my body could not sustain due to the stress of medical school, the plant-based diet. Mm-hmm. And I actually went in with some blood work and my total cholesterol was down to like 130. Which is very mm, low. yeah. Your brain and, needs that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And my tri- triglyceride levels were in in the teens, and and the doctor was like, "I don't care what spiritual beliefs you have or what political beliefs you have around why you say you're not eating meat. You're having meat today because mm-hmm. you're you're destroying your nervous system." And mm-hmm. one of my classmates took me out. Uh, we just had finals. And one of my classmates mm-hmm. took me out and she took me to this restaurant and I had lamb for the first time. It was orgasmic, brother. Mm-hmm. My body was like, thank you, <laughs> idiot. <laughs> this, <laughs> this, so you needed it, yeah. I needed right. it, my body needed it so bad, so bad. And that taught mm-hmm. me is like, you have to honor your constitution and you have to mm-hmm. listen to your body and what it needs. And, it, and one thing that I learned through that experience that you cannot force ideology upon physiology because guess who's going to win that battle right. the physiology, the physiology part every, 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 every time yes sir and right. so that was that was like a big life lesson and same it seems like dr daniels had that same example put on her like yeah, it she seems was great, was great 20 years time. things were fantastic but then as you start to shift your environment your life shifts if you're not staying in alignment with that Right, and you still trying to hold, is gonna take over. You're trying to hold to some ideological view of self. Um, I, this is right. supposed to be this, but your body's like, hey, no, circumstances and environment are shifting where we have to adapt and adjust, and you're being rigid over here. Yeah, guess mm-hmm. what's gonna break that rigidity because the body's gonna follow natural law, and so right. you you have to just really uh, honor that, and so like. Again, you, you have to look at who you are constitutionally. For me, I know that mm-hmm. at minimum, my diet needs to be 80% plant-based. I, like I said, I have it around 98. And I have we have mm-hmm. those uh, animal-based protein meals throughout the month. And I feel great. And I know mm-hmm. as I'm starting to work out more and engage more, that may have to even increase some to kind of sustain mm-hmm. more of the demand I'm putting on my body. But I also mm-hmm. know one of my really good friends, and you know the brother as well, Jelani. Uh, Jay has been a vegan man uh, for, uh, wow, I think like 25 years now, maybe 20. And mm-hmm. what's interesting, he lives in Boston. But the brother mm-hmm. has his stuff such, down to such a science that, and he works out all the time. And he's our mm-hmm. age, but he don't look, you know, he, he's like in, he's in his 50s, but he looks like he's young. Like we do, we right. don't look our age. And so, mm-hmm. so uh, he 
perfected this over the years. So it can't even be done in these more cooler environments. So it's you about, gotta monitor about, what, you you gotta take monitor in, what yeah. you're taking in. And he has that stuff down to a science for him mm -hmm. and everything he does. And so like, I actually, even with my medical education, all my experience clinically, everything, I still go to him at times and I'll ask him questions because the brother lives mm -hmm. this every single day. He has it down to a science. And so you just have to honor who you are constitutionally and really work with what you have, what, what your body right. presents to you as the, the matter to, you know, to form and to, to work with. So I think, uh, you know, for everyone, you got to really take into consideration where you are, how you are, ancestry, and adjust. And everything in moderation, always, yeah. you know, um, and you got to just really look at what, where you are from a health standpoint. If you are dealing with any kind of chronic illness or, you know, or disease or imbalance, yeah, you, you need to start incorporating more plant-based foods and more living foods into your diet to kind of help mm -hmm. overcome that. That's just facts. If you continue to eat meats that are, you know, acidifying and also inflammatory, you will not overcome that condition. Mm -hmm. And so you have to take all that into consideration as you're looking at your dietary needs. So, okay, that's a good point. People with, I've noticed this year, eczema in the United States of America is up. Like I hear the complaints, hey, my eczema is out of control. I hadn't had problem for years, but somehow this year, coincidentally COVID, eczema has been a problem for, for a lot of people. I personally think it's the water. Something's dead. Some something they put in the water to treat it, and that's what's causing these issues. Because even my eczema has started to flare up, and I hadn't had issues with it for I can't even remember. And then all of a sudden, I was like, "Where is this coming from?" Hmm. And um, then I saw it. You know, my grandson's dealing with it at six. My daughter skin flawless, and then all of a sudden, hers started. To, uh, some hers flared up on the back of her legs, and you know, spreading to other parts of the body. So what is, what is a person w w can do about that? I know that's a lot of dairy. You got to get rid of dairy, soy products and things like that. That's another key drive, drive of eczema that the doctors never even talk about when it comes to that. They never say stop drinking milk. And that's probably the number one cause of implement, you know, what's causing eczema to flare up. Well, eczema is, is a skin presentation. And so you have four primary uh, pathways of elimination for the body. Mm -hmm. You have the lungs, you have through, through breath, you have your uh, bowel movements, mm -hmm. where you got the liver and the large intestine involved and the small intestine mm -hmm. as well. And you have your urination through your kidneys and urinary bladder, mm -hmm. and you have your skin, mm -hmm. pores and sweat. These are the elimination, the mm -hmm. four major elimination pathways of the body. Now, all of this, when it comes to skin presentations, the first thing we always look at is the gut, the GI tract. Because mm -hmm. when the GI tract is compromised, when you have inflammation, you have gut dysbiosis, meaning you have all kind of opportunistic uh, bacteria, viruses, or parasites involved. There's inflammation. There's also um, intestinal permeability where the, uh, the actual cells are no longer in a tight junction, but they start to come apart mm -hmm. a little bit. So now things can enter into the, the body that normally wouldn't mm -hmm. get in there because they couldn't be digested and absorbed. Now they got access. Mm -hmm. And so these things start an immune response and that mm -hmm. can show up through skin presentations. Because the body's now having to deal with eliminating toxins. And so it's going to mm -hmm. try to get rid of it through any case or form. It can. And so with most of, most of your skin presentations that we see clinically, it's a gut issue. Mm -hmm. Food sensitivities, mm -hmm. food allergies, or eating mm -hmm. foods that are inflammatory to the system, eating foods that you can't just digest and break down because you don't have the enzymes. Mm -hmm. for All these things begin to create you know, that gut dysbiosis. And with that, once those toxins enter into the bloodstream, now they're in the body, the immune system has to respond. And, 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 the, and what right. you're getting, what the eczema is or psoriasis or any of these skin issues, 
are the body's attempt to rid itself of these toxicities. So we look at mm -hmm. healing the gut and then also detoxification, supporting those detox detoxification mm -hmm. pathways. And obviously breathing more, eating more alkaline, alkalizing foods, uh, consuming more water, getting more hydration into the body, moving the body, mm -hmm. getting back to those kind of basics will help facilitate that. But you have to look at addressing the underlying issues that for most people when it comes to most of your skin conditions that you're dealing with is a gut issue. It's a gut issue. In, okay. yeah, infl inflammation, uh, you know, and just the, the lack of integrity of the mucosal lining due to the inflammation and you now having mm -hmm. that, that permeability or what they call leaky gut, you know, where you now mm -hmm. have things coming into the body that don't belong there and causing these immune reactions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So basically what you're saying, they need to detox. Yeah. Do, yeah <laughs> need to detox. Cleanse, cleanse, brother. Yeah. Get cleansing and, out. you know, and like getting, you know, doing, uh, the best way I could describe it to you is like this. The body is literally a printout. Mm -hmm. it, it is going to present to you your truth. And so when the body is dealing with toxicity, spiritually, mentally, or emotionally, or physically, it will present those toxicities in whatever form mm. they choose to show up as. And so what you have to do is you go through a detoxification, a cleansing process of spirit, mind, emotions, and body, you know, mm. and, and I've, I've had, I've had folks who, you know, uh, who've been in toxic relationships and the body presents that toxicity, mm. you know, because of the stress that that relationship causes and stress is one of the key factors that can easily disrupt, uh, the GI system. And obviously that inflammation is another form of stress on the body that's going to mm. create that fight or flight state and your thoughts and your emotions will add to that. And if you're eating foods that are compounding it because your body has a sensitivity to them, you're creating antibodies towards these foods because they're seeping into the body unprocessed on, you know, they didn't go through the proper digestion and absorption. All these things can compound. And then next thing you know, you got asthma, you got eczema, you got psoriasis, you got autoimmune conditions, all these things start to show up because of the compounded stress that you put on the body and the body can only present what it has been exposed to. The physiology and biochemistry has to adapt to the environment in which it finds. And so when you begin to change those things through cleansing and detoxifying and moving the body as it's designed to do, yeah, those things start to resolve. And I've seen them resolve relatively right. easily. The body yeah, works in 28 day cycles for that. That makes sense because I didn't start seeing it more on my daughter until this whole lockdown. Mm -hmm. She's yeah. not getting out around. But that makes sense to, yeah. Yeah, that makes Now, my grandson, I think his whole idea was a lot of processed foods. And yeah, and our junk. little ones, exactly. We, we give them, you start from the Similac. You know, they were put on like some formula. Mm -hmm. You know, instead of the mm -hmm. breast milk, if they were putting on formula and these kinds of things, a lot of times their digestive systems have difficulty processing that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so mm -hmm. that starts to create some immune re responses and then they end up with these skin conditions and these kinds of things. Right. Yeah, I, I would say my case is I drink distilled water. I do a lot of things, but I think I need to uh, eat more leafy greens. And, uh Greens are key, I, I, especially the more melanin you have, in my opinion, the more greens you need to be putting into your body. Right. Yeah. And that's where my one whole, because I don't know how to make greens <laughs> like cook them. <laughs> Brother, just steam them. <laughs> just throw them in a, a put a little bit. steam to them, man. And right. yeah, don't, you know, put a little uh, Himalayan sea salt on it if you want a little flavor to it. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta just yeah, eat them right. I, I, I feel you because that, that was the thing for me, you know. Uh, but I, I had to get conscious of it because my body was telling me, "Hey, look, you have to make an adjustment." Yeah, that's, you have that's to, my you, greens. You I was just sitting there, yeah. I'm not eating enough green, like yeah. the deep dark green vegetables. And you can do it yeah. too through even like smoothies. Like for example, like every morning here we have we have spir we add spirulina to our smoothies. So we're getting something green in the morning, and obviously every. Our dinners always have something green within them. This is just kind of how we do things here. This is part of our standard mm -hmm. now. And so you can get greens. You can even 
juice greens. You can put like right. I'll put kale, fresh kale. Uh, you know, I've actually I've actually put collard greens um, into the actual leaf. Yeah, actual leaf juicing. Yeah. yeah, I've juiced collard greens before, and okay, so you have a juicer, not a yeah, blender. Juice, well, and and both. You can do it for both. Okay. You can make like a lot of times, like kale and spinach in a smoothie is awesome. Yeah. Yeah, putting yeah. those in a smoothie, man, it can really do that. But like I said we add the spirulina powder in there in the mornings, and and these are the kind of things that we're getting that nice concentration of you know green food in it, and you're getting all the nutrients from the greens, specifically magnesium. And that was I was deficient in. You know, that's what the doctor that next doctor told me. He's like, dude, you're magnesium deficient because I wasn't eating greens. Does the center model molecule for uh, chlorophyll is magnesium? And, and what's interesting, the, the molecular structure for chlorophyll is almost exact as our hemoglobin molecular structure. Mm -hmm. The difference is the center molecule and chlorophyll is magnesium and the hemoglobin is iron. You start mm -hmm. taking in chlorophyll, you actually will build your blood and clean your blood. Okay. You will, you will get, so you mean body will create chlorophyll blood. supplement. No, chlorophyll, supplement. chlorophyll in your greens, eating you know, collard greens, greens, leafy greens, gotcha. you know, Brussels sprouts, green veggies. But yeah, you can put do the supplementation as well, you know, to kind of help you with that. But you got to be mindful because chlorophyll can act as a detoxifier and a chelator. It will start to pull toxins. And, and so if you take too much of it, it'll really start to act as a de uh, very strong detoxifier, pulling out heavy metals, pulling out all kinds of toxins out of, the, out of the tissues so the body can eliminate them. But naturally just incorporating those things into your daily diet and making sure you're getting an adequate amount each day, you will naturally just do this in a very more, in a more gentle fashion for the body to kind of right. really help it clean. Like we, like now we've had some people, for example, I had a woman uh, who was one of our students and she used to work on a naval yard welding ships. Mm. So she exposed a lot of heavy metals and it got so bad for her where she, uh, they had to take a, a lobe, a section of her lung out because of just the toxicity. And mm. they had her and she had to sleep with an iron lung every night to keep her breathing and not, you know, suffocating the night and passing away. And so she was right. constantly fatigued. She went completely vegan which she, she had to do just to kind of sustain herself. And, and she was eating all these things, you know, but she still had difficulty with breathing. So, so she came into my class the first day of class. And she said, I've gone to doctor after doctor after doctor. I've been on this iron lung for 15 years. And your class is my last hope. I don't know what else to do. That's why I'm taking this holistic nutrition class. I was like, well, look, I can't make any new promises, but I said, just kind of give me your story. So she told me, you know, what was going on and how she has to sleep, take naps in the middle of the day constantly because she is not able to make enough energy. And so I'm listening to her and I say, well, it sounds like there's an oxygen capacity issue. Your body cannot take in enough oxygen. So I said, well, here's what I want you to do. I said, I want you to, uh, you know, you got to get more greens, more chlorophyll. She said, well, I'm a vegan and I, I have plant based. I'm doing it. I said, okay, that's great. Continue that. But I just want you to add chlorella, which is another microalgae, just like spirulina. And it, but chlorella has the highest concentration of chlorophyll of any other food on the planet. I said, I want you to start taking, supplementing with chlorella in addition to everything else you're doing. So she mm. went away. She came back the next week. And I got this massive bear hug from behind and I turned around and I was like, and she's like tears in her eyes. Like, Oh my God. She said, you know, Dr. Madi, after five days of just doing what you said, she said, I'm off the iron lung mm. after being on it for 15 years. And she was up. She said, I'm upset because she said, no doctor doctors ever told me this. I said, well, you, they can't tell you what they haven't been taught. I said, you're dealing with a conventional doctor. Right. They're, they're, they're taught they got, this. I said, you can't fall. Depending on where you live. Yeah. Where, I said, they got so, medical standards. They got to follow. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I said, they only can give you what they've been taught. So I said, you know, that's why you came here and we're, and we're giving you more. I said, but yeah, 
you needed more oxygen in your body. And guess what can give you that chlorophyll because it acts like hemoglobin in the body and you build more blood, you now have more capacity to take in more oxygen because hemoglobin is carrying oxygen to all your cells. So we wanted to support that pathway. And now you're doing that. And one of her life goals were for her and her husband, they had these Harley bikes they had bought and they wanted to go up the coastline of, you know, the one-on-one coastline that goes up on the West coast of Pacific coast. Uh, and they wanted to ride from LA to visit their friends up in Oregon. And that was like a lifelong dream that they wanted to do. And she actually did it that summer. And they thought they would never do it because of her condition. And so just wow. adding chlorophyll to the diet, in this case, chlorella, they were able to get that done. So just chlorella, chlorella. Yeah. And so that is a great way, you know, if you want to get greens in to the, the body, yeah, just supplementing with chlorella. Uh, can be extraordinary in helping you to do that. Okay, because that's the the challenge I have with my grandson. He he'll tell me straight up, I'm not a vegetarian. <laughs> you know, I don't eat vegetables. How, right? How old, that's how old is he? How, how old he, is he tell me straight up, I don't eat vegetables. <laughs> I'm not a vegetarian. So you can you can you know I'm figuring man. out how to trick yeah. him into things exactly. like. If I gave him a piece of turkey straight up, he won't eat it. But if it's got gravy on it, he'll eat it. Yeah. It's it's weird. Like it, it's yeah. got to have some gravy on it. Yeah. It's got to look a certain way. He'll eat yeah, it. He, he's at that age, yeah. Yeah. So you know, because I I really want to get his skin cleared up, and I think I know this is extreme detoxification that he needs. You know, yeah, the dairy some of the will I can't, be, is, is he consuming dairy? No, he's not. He's drinking oat milk. Oh, uh, he's not any dairy, no eggs. Yeah. Uh, he's got peanut allergies. Uh, it's just that what he's he he's very picky about what he eats. He wants to eat tacos, uh, French fries, you know, pizza, which you know he can't have that not with the cheese on it. Um, and um, but he 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 just want to eat all of the and he likes uh cereal, you know. The, the sugary so, stuff. So one thing, one way to work with children that I found that has been successful because they're they're very adaptive, but you have to guide them. And so one way to mm. do that is actually have them make the food with you, let them start to participate mm. in it. Like you're, we're gonna make this together today, and and you start teaching them about the vegetables and helping them understand that oh yeah, you plant this seed, this actually grows up for you, you know, and just helping them understand it from that way where they're now involved especially at his age, mm -hmm. age six, that it becomes a very uh, fantastic experience for him. It becomes almost magical for him. Like, wow, okay, this is how this stuff is made. This is how this stuff grows. And now I'm in the kitchen with mom and dad and granddad making this stuff. And I'm a part mm -hmm. of the, the process here. Then he will be more inclined to begin to experiment with these foods. And so you kind of have to guide them through education, through teaching right. them. And we've done this with a number of times when I was... Uh, in medical school going through my rotations and I was doing my pediatric rotation, we were working with the children. Yeah, this was like a big issue. A lot of the parents like, yeah, the kids won't eat this. They just want the sugar and everything else that they're accustomed to. And so just through uh, incorporating them into the process, getting them involved and mm -hmm. teaching them, and educating them and empowering them this way, they become much more interested in it. And you'll get, you'll get them in a place where that's all he wants. And I, I, I'm thinking of a person in mind right now where she had two little ones who couldn't stand uh, anything if it wasn't coming from McDonald's. They had, they, they, had <laughs> right. condi they had conditioned them to McDonald's. Conditioned them that bad, every, yeah. Every time we, you know, when you do something good, okay, we go to McDonald's. Oh, we're going to go mm -hmm. to McDonald's for lunch. We're going to, oh, get McDonald's for breakfast. So they were teaching the kids. So that's all they wanted. They were addicted. And McDonald's food can become addictive. And so they were addicted to the food. Mm -hmm. And so they had to work with them for a few months doing, you know, the recommendations we gave. But now, like, uh, well, when when they left uh, under our care, the, all the children wanted was the vegetables and and wanted to get in there making it. They're very fascinated with them, but it was because of how we educated them and and how they were right. empowered by the parents. And so, mm -hmm. I, so, so I would I would encourage that yeah, getting them in there, preparing oh. it with you, let them see how this stuff works, and explain mm -hmm. them to them, you know, and, and and have fun, make it a fun game make it enjoyable and and they will really shift and because they're they're at that age they're so malleable with their consciousness and so if you just mm -hmm. point them in the right direction they'll follow that path right okay so 
when you're making these smoothies, what are you putting in the smoothie other than the? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, bro, we 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 put some work movies, they need to yeah. good, you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so so for me, uh, what comes into my smoothies? Uh, we use maca. Maca is an adaptogenic food, and adaptogens work with the body. So for for instance, with maca, it's adaptogenic food for hormones. So if you're lower in hormones mm-hmm. or you're elevating hormones, this particular root that comes out of, you know. Let's mock. The, yeah, the indigenous, the indigenous Americas, you know, is one of our ancestral mm. foods, right? When you put that particular uh, maca uh, root up into the smoothie, it helps with the adaptogens of the um, adapts, helps the hormones adapt. And so for me, I want to make sure that my testosterone and my androgens are where they need to be, you know, as far as me being a man and making sure all my other hormones are healthy. So maca is a part of that for me. Also, the spirulina I already told right. you about. Uh, I, I like bananas. So mm-hmm. I put bananas in there as well. Uh, I only use like plant-based mm-hmm. milks. So for me, I use coconut milk in mine. And we also have in there uh, goji berries. We'll put goji berries in there as another superfood. Good for building up the yin, uh, mm. you know, energy and just su- 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 supporting blood, supporting the kidneys, you know, energetically. Uh, we are also put in there. Yeah, I'll, I'll, from time to time, I'll put, I'll open up probiotic capsules and put those in there as well. Mm-hmm. Um, if I know, okay, I really, yeah. if I, if I, I know if I really need um, some more digestive probiotic care, you know, I even will get, you know, like coconut yogurt or coconut kefir mm-hmm. and add to it uh, mm-hmm. so that I can get, you know, that um, component. But yeah, it's just literally, and then also, yeah, some, a handful of like greens we'll toss in there. Okay. And so right. that, that's- Raw really greens, just, no yeah, powder, some, yeah, powder some, stuff. Yeah, some raw, raw greens we'll right. throw in there. And also you can't go wrong with berries, you know, like uh, your blackberries, blueberries, mm-hmm. raspberries, strawberries, you know, you can put those in there as well. And so it is it's a mix between those things and they I like mine a particular way. And also I I, I do um forgot to mention the pumpkin protein. So I put a pumpkin okay, protein powder pumpkin. in there. Yeah, they, so I can get some protein okay. in the morning as well. And uh what I will do what I'm actually getting back into now is adding in some uh hemp seed oil or some mm. coconut oil. So I'm getting that protein and a decent amount of fat in there, you know, cause I'm getting right. back into working out. So it's important, you know, that I'm getting that protein and that fat going and just kind of make sure my energy levels are maintained throughout the day. So where can people find, where's your website? Is it? Yeah. Uh, uh, the, web, the website's called the Akon and Akon is spelled O K A N. And then it's the word journey. So it's the Akon journey.com. Right. Arconjourney.com. Well, I'll leave when I look at the video, I'll put it in the uh, description. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so with the now that you you on you got all of the health thing going, everything's going. Um, what else are you doing outside of that? With regards yeah, to the, uh, like you got your uh fiance you work with, she does some uh, health things too. Yeah, don't she? yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so we, you know, with with this quote unquote so called lockdown, uh, normally we do like a lot of live events, like workshops and retreats. Uh, mm-hmm. We're gonna plan, hopefully, for this coming year, we're gonna look at doing another wellness cruise, where we actually mm-hmm. uh, we we partner with another company uh, here in the Netherlands, and we charter a plane and a sailboat. They're in, in Turkey, and we mm. sail between the islands of Turkey and Greece for seven days, mm. uh, and we go through actually wow. um, the seven domains of life mastery that are a part of the Akon journey. So we go through that. Mm. And we have meditation. We have we're doing yoga um, <clears throat> as well with them, and just enjoying the experience of life because that's what this whole thing's about. You know that we are mm. in this extraordinary life journey, and we're mastering. Right every aspect of who we are among, uh, along this journey. And so we help put people in an environment 
with the cruises and even our, our retreats, our wellness retreats and workshops that we do, we try to create an environment and experience for them to help them see what's possible for their lives. And so mm -hmm. we're looking to getting back into that this coming year, uh, hopefully with this lockdown thing. Things change, yeah. 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 It, it, it's real interesting now that you brought that up about this whole virus that we are dealing with. Um, you know, it, it's, it's strange when they create these lockdowns. Okay. Like right now they just did a lot. They're doing another lockdown in North Carolina now, you know, starting Friday, businesses got to close at 10, you know, all the restaurants got to close at 10. They can't serve alcohol. Like, you know, you know after okay. something about alcohol, I'm like, okay, I'm trying to figure out where they're getting all of this science from to support some of the things they're doing. I could go in a restaurant, sit down and eat with, walk in there with the mask, and then I sit down and remove the mask, but I don't see any barriers on my table from the air that I just walked in with and around. I don't, I, you know what I'm saying? It's just all of these things that they're doing is, is like, okay, can somebody show me the science behind wearing a cloth mask with the Dallas Cowboys on it or some other paraphernalia? How... <laughs> You know, much is that helping me? You know, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's a uh, question. That's a big question. Yeah, and the thing is, with that, those masks. <laughs> I'll, I'll just tell you uh, an example. So, the H one N one flu. You remember way back? I think it was like two thousand eighteen, yeah, yeah, yeah. or something. We had we had that that flu scare, what have you. So I was in medical school at the time. I was doing my rotations. So mm -hmm. we had someone who was possibly infected with that flu. Mm -hmm. We had to almost get into this hazmat gear to go in there and mm -hmm. see it. And I'll never forget, there was a little girl. She was presented with symptoms mm -hmm. similar to being infected with the flu, that flu strain. So I had to go in and get in this entire yellow uniform that came all the way up here to my neck, uh, actually up to my jawline. Mm -hmm. And then it has a hood over it. And I had this mm -hmm. respirator mask that I had on and then, a sh uh, and then the shield over it. And I had, so yeah. my body at all was not going to be exposed to at all. this yeah, yeah. little girl. Yeah. And we had to go in and, and, and I was like frustrated. I was like, man, we got to get into all this just for, you know, this flu, they're like, yeah. And so mm -hmm. you hear out there that this virus is supposed to be worse than the flu. Well, then the other ones, any other yeah, thing they, they, that they've they, been counting. Yeah, yeah, they, they, like, they, yeah. So no. it, it, was, it was worse than that flu. However, right. they're, they're telling you that you just putting on this cloth mask is going to uh, protect you. Do something. And do something. And and the thing is that, you know, first of all, viruses are not alive. So mm -hmm. this, this, this virus is not out here trying to, you know, look around and- It's not heat seeking. It's not heat seeking yeah. anybody. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. The viruses, they're not living things. You know, they're, they're, they're protein derivatives, if anything. Um, and we have an extraordinary amount of viruses. We have more viruses in our body than any other thing, cells, bacteria alike. Right, right. And it's, it, can it be likened to this? It, I, you know, I can only give it some comparisons, right? Okay. I used to work in the pet department of Walmart, right? Okay, yeah. And in the tank, this brown substance builds up all the time right mm -hmm. which is you know from light the algae is building up but it's also bacteria and other things mm -hmm. right now what people want to do is clean that oh i need my tank to look shiny but really a really crystal clear tank is really an unhealthy tank mm -hmm. because all of that brown stuff you're seeing in the algae 
is good for the fish environment. That's their environment. Because if you go in, you know, you go, if you untouched environment, you go into the water, you'll see all of this stuff around. It's, it's they ecosystem. need that yeah. to survive. It's, it's, a it's an ecosystem. ecosystem. So when you're cleaning that out, you're really, you know, damaging the ecosystem. And that's why when you clean a fish tank, you only take about 10% of the water out, put a new one in. And, you know, you just take that brown stuff and kind of push it into the gravel so that they can still have that environment. So what I'm saying is when you're talking about viruses, can that be kind of in the same area? Viruses are useful yeah, in they, a way they, in our body. A- absolutely, they are. And that's a, we, we, we right. have an extraordinary synergistic system um, of mm-hmm. mutual benefit and mutual exchange. You know, and let's just take, mm-hmm. for example, the gut flora, our microbiome, mm-hmm. you know, these healthy gut flora, these healthy gut bacteria that you hear about. So there are billions upon billions, actually trillions of these things there, okay? Mm -hmm. And they have a very delicate system that keeps Mm -hmm. a balance. And not only does it keep a balance in the intestinal lining, and it's part of the defense of the body, the body uses them as a defense. They also influence Mm -hmm. our nervous system, our Mm -hmm. hormones, and our immune system. And so without them, if I took all the bacteria and the viruses there and the parasites that are in this system, I stripped them all out of your body, Mm -hmm. you would be susceptible to opportunistic pathogens that would kill you quickly. Because they're there to keep keep the balance to keep the peace. So when you drop a bomb like an antibiotic into that system and you start killing them all off, now people who are on a lot of antibiotics, they're more susceptible. And this is how you actually end up creating these super bugs Mm -hmm. where they now Mm -hmm. become resistant to these antibiotics. They don't have these other bacteria in there to keep them in check and they're opportunistic, they take over, and now they're resistant to what the bomb, you, the nuclear bomb you threw in there called an antibiotic, trying to destroy everything. And then you end up with this opportunistic pathogen getting access to the body and then causing severe illness and then even potentially death. And so right. when you look at nature, nature works in harmony within itself. Mm-hmm. We're a part of nature. We're not something outside of it. And there is a beautiful, harmonious exchange of life that's always taking place. And when you disrupt that through, you know, these artificial measures, yeah, you get the end results of what you have. And so to sit there and call viruses enemies is, is a very interesting thing because they're essential for your survival. And what I've always you know, looked at when I was studying uh, uh, Chinese medicine and studying naturopathic medicine and just looking at who I am as an indigenous person here on this planet and just our, what we, how our ancestors saw life. We, we see ourselves as a part of the great whole. We're not antagonist to mm-hmm. nature. We're one with it. And right. so with that, right. viruses and bacteria can only thrive in environments that are conducive for them to thrive. And so if right. you put them in a, a, a environment or terrain that allows them to flourish, they're going to flourish. And so if your mm-hmm. body is unhealthy, if your thoughts are unhealthy, if you're, if you're emotionally unhealthy, if you're spiritually imbalanced, it's imbalanced, gonna, yeah, it's it's like you, you, create, yeah. you create an environment right. for opportunistic pathogens to thrive. And they're there mm-hmm. as gatekeepers to even to let you know, hey, you're out of balance, so we're here to check you on that. And so I even see right. when someone actually gets a quote-unquote virus or a quote-unquote disease, it's not a bad thing. It's the law of nature, the law of your body, the law of life saying, hey, how you are currently living, how you're currently operating is not in alignment. So you need to make some changes or we're going to mm-hmm. take you up out of here. Yeah. And so, so it's like what you said earlier. Like the when 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 you're presented with symptoms like flu and things like that and say this this particular virus. Mm-hmm. 
that's really the body detoxing, yeah. you know, getting rid of whatever it needs to get rid of. Yeah. And I, and just from my observation, this is just purely noticing who's being affected, where they are being affected and who, and then when it, when it ends in the results of death, they're always in some type of care of, of a facility of some sort. Mm -hmm. Like what I'm noticing, no one is being found at home dying from this. You're like, Hey, we found this guy. He died. We tested him. He had COVID. It's always they presented these symptoms, went to seek some type of professional assistance, and then from there they, they their their situation got worse, and either they got you know got worse and got better, or they got worse and didn't make it right. Um, so it, it it is a common denominator that the assistance there's some type of assistance from some type of agency that where these extreme cases are being found what nursing homes and 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 then hospitals so well, a lot of these well there therein lies the rub you know with when you're in these environments uh like in nursing homes for example most of these people are from a health standpoint compromised right so again you when something like this uh engages with the, that compromised environment it has the ability to thrive over the protective systems that right. are in place. That, and that's what I'm noticing. Yeah. yeah and, and what's interesting with it is that, you know, the immune system, the, uh, the immune system can get out of check and you can have like a cytokine mm -hmm. storm, you know, this massive amount of inflammation that takes place in the body that starts to shut things down. It's the body's response trying to heal, but it can go overboard. And, mm -hmm. and then you get, then the body gets itself in trouble because it doesn't know how to stop mm -hmm. because there's so much it's trying to deal with and it's just kind of just, takes it mm -hmm. to an excessive level of right. protection and actually harms the overall organism that is trying to save. Right. And and so especially if it's being introduced with a lot of artificial measures. The body's like, yeah. okay, I gotta deal with this now. This is coming. And now this is oh, what do I do now? It, it can be it too much for it to, crazy. Yeah. It can right. be too much for it to handle and it becomes compromised right. and it is exhaust its measures to uh, sustain itself. And, and so right. again, the, like the best that people can do is really, you know, fortify themselves as what we've been discussing here with yeah. the appropriate foods, making sure you're getting moving the body because the body is designed to move. It has no other purpose, but to move and navigate you around this plane of existence to fulfill that, which is your purpose. It has no other purpose here. If you stop moving it, you stop engaging it and facilitating your purpose here on this planet, it says, okay, we will no longer activate all our resources to sustain the life and it will start to decline and we've seen it over mm -hmm. and over again so moving your body is important uh eating well and resting it and taking care of it and just doing mm -hmm. the things that are of necessity will help you begin to support and create a system that when it's exposed to these particular uh antigens or pathogens if you will mm -hmm. It is able to combat them with ease and keep them in check because you have a robust immune system present with all these healthy bacteria and viruses and things that are there to keep the system in the delicate nature it needs to be for health, to sustain health. And so right. the biggest issue I've seen in this entire pandemic, quote unquote pandemic, is not the virus being a pandemic, but the fear of being a pandemic. Right. I think that's playing a major role in people's health. Yeah. The fear, not only of the virus, but of being able to live or may earn a living. Exactly. Yeah. You just increase. And then you throw in the whole mask uh, scenario that just like throwing <laughs> more fire onto the situation because now they not getting their proper oxygen. Now you have all these other factors, and I think that's what's all of these contributing factors are yeah. causing problems. Now they're noticing children are committing suicide. They're disengaged from this online virtual learning environment. This is all coming out now that this is a major problem now. Mm -hmm. You know, all of these locking the kids down and they can't go to school. And the crazy thing about that, a lot of the children are not the ones driving this thing. The children yeah. are least affected. Yeah. Yeah, they're they're, uh, they're exactly they're they're on they're, they're unfortunately under receiving end of these policies and 
uh, these mm -hmm. enforced protocols that disrupt their learning, uh, disrupt their growth as, you know, young human beings, because they're now losing the social engage engagement that is, is a, a essential part of their development. And that's a big deal. And they're not able to go outside and play. And, mm -hmm. you know, and, and really be able to be active. And like I said, with all that vital force and life force they have in their little bodies, it needs to express, mm. it needs to move, it needs to get out and, and express itself and exchange with others. And you're inhibiting all of that. Mm. You're, you're now locked behind yeah. a, a screen. A know, fear, a fear yeah. they're, they're, for something yeah. that doesn't really affect them like it affect the, the more, you know, population that have health issues yeah you know those and even in that people. population indeed i mean the survival rate even in that population is like 98 99.5 percent yeah. and the unsuccessful 99.8 percent it's they're still relatively close in survival rate to, no matter which scale you're on exactly when it comes to who gets it and have issues because everybody i know personally that got it or was diagnosed positive survived Mm -hmm. You know, only one person I know had to be hospitalized mm. where he was like, oh, it's rough. But mm -hmm. then I remember him talking about it all the time, worried about it. And then he got it. You know, when he got it, he's like, oh, man, it's great. So when you all of those factors together is like a, a great big recipe for disaster, you yeah. know. If he's if he's sitting there worried about this every day, stressing yeah, he was all talking. kind of stress yeah. hormones in his body that's compromising his immune system, making him more susceptible to these kinds of things. So it's almost yeah. a self fulfilling prophecy. What, right. You know, what, what and he, me, what he's, I he's, don't think he's, twice about it. Yeah. And I've been, you know, I've traveled mm -hmm. right in the midst of a lockdown, and I, yeah. I none of my routines really changed because you know I don't work. In, a, in an environment where I got to go to work for anybody, but nothing. Yeah. You see, I mean, I'm like, okay, so it's, it's really about your holiness of your, your mind and your spirit, where you feel, and plus giving your body the proper nutrients. You know, I got exactly. stuff in there that I know will shut things down if I feel something coming on, like yeah. that, yeah. you know, yeah. from a toothache to a cold. Mm -hmm. You know, I could stop a toothache. <laughs> In, in with less than 24 hours yeah. you know with certain things you know yeah, and, and that's the whole so. thing brother just like you are doing things on a daily basis that sustain you most people right from what i've come to understand in my short period of time doing what it is i do i don't have the knowledge or if they have the knowledge, they don't have the discipline and the patience right. to implement the things that will do right by them. Right. Yeah. You, you're right about that because when it came to going, you know, using pure natural remedies mm -hmm. in the beginning, it took time because my body was so used to pollution, but now it's like, it, it, it's, it's like it, I can do something and I can see the effects within hours yeah. now that I've been doing it for so long. But your body has to get used to using those natural remedies to repair itself. When you yeah. give it a, exactly. a, a, a artificial substance, it's like, well, I'm going to sit on the sidelines and let that do its job, you know, because really the medications, I think it, it, this is just a guess that could be wrong, have an inhibitor for your natural functions they, to work yeah they, they can be uh more suppressive right yeah that's what i'm thinking that's just you know that don't take my word on it i just you know oh uh, but you know using the natural things like i've had you know tooth pain coming and i know this one's gonna be a doozy clove oil uh in extreme circumstances some neem oil tastes nasty but rub it around that thing because that pain is coming from what Something in there, some food got in there, and it started to develop an infection. Mm -hmm. And all I need to do is get rid of the infection, pain gone. <laughs> you know, get rid of that inflammation, it's gone. Now, yeah. you know, what I always tell people that uh, our, our conventional medical model has its place. In emergent care, mm -hmm. urgency, things of urgency, we have a brilliant system to sustain right. or stop the body from completely 
expiring. And so, mm -hmm. you know, and medications, you know, and these pharmaceutical drugs that we have created have, you know, the capacity to deal with things in the short term emergent scenario. Right. What the issue becomes when you start doing these things chronically and being on right. these things well, long term, that's regular. when you start mm -hmm. destroying the body and you start really because I've, I've had, you know, I've had uh, patients, students and clients, they'll have to take, you know, a medication, you know, and I was a perfect example until I could figure out how to control my blood pressure through natural means, I needed that little 16 milligrams of Atacan every day to kind of keep things c controlled as I worked on the causes of why the blood pressure was starting to, you know, get out of control. And once I got that figured out, I was done with that. Mm -hmm. And so the thing is, your lifestyle and your lifestyle choices have a profound impact on how your body is responding to you. Mm -hmm. And I always tell people our bodies are our best friends. It, it cannot lie to us. It will always tell us and show us our truth. Always. Right. It can do no other thing. It's only here to serve. And so when you see an imbalance in the physical form, you have to look at self-management. How have you been managing and governing self? Because yeah, I can tell you, my body will tell me yeah, <laughs> that I got you know, ate too much meat or sweets. It will tell me. Yeah. Um, yeah, I know uh, you probably got to get on with your, the rest of your day. Um, yes, just one more time. Um, just let everybody know how they can find you. Yeah, so they can um, find me at the website. Uh, it's theaconjourney.com. Akon is spelled again, O-K-A-N. So the And also uh, you can look at, look me up. You know, I have uh, the Akon Journey uh, Facebook page as well. Uh, so you can find me on Facebook uh, that way. All right. And I'll leave the links in the chat in the description. As always, it's good to talk with you and Likewise, learn right. some new health uh, remedies. Yes. All right. All right, peace. peace. Take care. Take care. All right.